Hey everybody, hope you're well today. Uh, look outside, it's a beautiful day outside and hope you can spend some time out there today. Um, broadcasting live again this Sunday from the uh, building of the Lancaster Church of Christ. Uh, last Sunday we, we did so from the pulpit. Uh, this Sunday, if you're familiar with our building, I'm out here in the Welcome Center and uh, this is usually a place about this time that's bustling with activity and and greetings and so forth and we certainly miss that but we're looking forward to hopefully very soon getting back together uh, until then we'll do the best we can and uh, again hope you're doing well and i want to begin again this week with um just a few updates announcements and then we'll we'll have a bible lesson together um, if you didn't see, we, we do have a Bible class recorded uh, for our younger ones. Uh, many thanks to Sharon Jacobs for putting that together for us and, and doing such a great job. It's posted both on Facebook and, and on our YouTube page. I would really recommend that you take advantage of that. And, uh, you know, if any of our other um, children's Bible class teachers would like to do that, um, would like to record a class, we would love to help you do that and and be very receptive to it. Thank you to Sharon for putting that together for us. Um, several opportunities to serve uh, upcoming. Um, please keep um, an eye on this page and, and your emails uh, in coming days. Um, if you would like to make some cards, especially our, our, our kids, if you'd like to make some sort of bright, cheery cards for, for people in nursing homes, we've had some people that said that they will deliver them. Um, if you want to make those and deliver them to the church building here, just outside the, the front doors, there's a little mailbox, an Ohio State Buckeye mailbox. You can drop them in, and we'll make sure those are delivered to people who uh, probably are really feeling lonely now, not able to receive visits at nursing homes and that kind of thing because of what's going on. Also, uh, there is a plan in place to, to make some weekend food bags for children uh, in our area, actually uh, K through 12 age. Um, we're going to be putting those together hopefully this week and and uh, getting word out and letting people stop by on on Friday and pick them up. Um, if you would like to be a part of providing those, um, the supplies for them, we'll have more information out to you. Let me give you a list of some of the things we're looking for. If you would like to donate um, juice boxes, applesauce cups, fruit cups, pudding cups, snack fruits, cheese, peanut butter, crackers, packets of oatmeal, apples, individual packets of chips, uh, that kind of thing. Um, if you would like to, as you're out at the store, um, pick some of those things up and put, help put them together. Like I said, obviously there's more details to that. We'll get those out as we have it all worked out. So uh, hope, hopefully we can be a good service to some of our young people that way just encourage you to continue to check on one another uh, especially our our older members let's be checking on them and uh, making one another aware of needs uh, leadership of the church has been trying to call all our members over the last week and so far what we've been hearing is is good uh, the people are doing well but we want to keep in contact in these days when we can't be together uh, weekly um, please let us know if there's are people among us in need. Okay? Why don't we have a word of prayer and then we'll get into our lesson for today. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the day you've given us. We thank you for the strength that you're giving us and, and the endurance as we go through these strange times. Um, this is your day. We want to worship you. We want to hear a word from you today. Please be with us as we consider those things that, that might strengthen us. I thank you for each person. 
that uh, is a part of this, that you'll bless us all, keep us healthy, and, and, um, and show us how we can grow through this time. Thank you for Jesus, the one who died for us, your dear son, our Savior. We come to, come to you in his name today. Amen. So I'd like to begin with a reading from the book of James, chapter 5, and verses 7 through 11. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Well, the message this morning is uh, from this text is, is patience. And they say that patience is a virtue, just not an American one. And I imagine all our patience is being tested uh, in these strange days. The scripture says that the patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, um, that the Spirit produces in our lives, but it's still a hard one to come by at times. Uh, there's a, a story told of Philip Brooks. If that name is familiar to you, he was a, a well-known Christian songwriter of old days. He wrote, uh, among others, the song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Uh, stories told of him that one day he was pacing back and forth in his office when someone entered his study and asked, What's the matter, preacher? And very frustrated, Brooks replied, I'm in a hurry, and God ain't. I suppose we can all identify with that frustration, can't we? Um, it's been said wisely, I think, that, that while God is never late, He's also rarely early. He does things, in other words, at just the right time. And he doesn't really consult us on his schedule, does he? Uh, he doesn't, you know, get us in a room and, and sit us in a circle and ask us all to share our opinions on, on how and when he should do things. Uh, he is supremely wise. And he knows when, and he knows how. And it's up to us to be patient, and to persevere, and to wait. Now, this passage to me is very interesting in James chapter 5. Um, we have that great word in verse 7, therefore. A really important word in Scripture uh, that, that links what has gone before with what comes after. And, and so James is sort of saying, as he writes that, uh, therefore, in light of what we had just talked about, you, what might you expect him to say now, if you look at what's come just before what we read, he's made a catalog of some really awful sins that hurt people and that insult God. And so following that up, we might expect him to say something like, therefore, be outraged, or therefore grab those sinners and, and shake some sense into them, or maybe worse. But instead, James writes, therefore be patient, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. You know, we might al almost think it would make more sense for James to say something like, therefore give up, in light of all the sin that surrounded them in their world, all the problems. Just give up, curse the darkness, withdraw from it all. But instead, he says, be patient. See, the New Testament 
seems to say to us pretty strongly that that both um, giving into the world, that is giving up on the one hand, and attacking the world on the other hand, are wrong. Instead, we're taught to be patient, patient until the coming of the Lord. And then he repeats it in verse 8. He says, be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. That's really where I took the idea of the title of this message from, Hurry Up and Be Patient, uh, because there, there seems to be some urgency here in what James says. The Lord is returning soon, so they need to make sure that they've developed this fruit of patience in their lives so they can be prepared for the Lord's return. And I would say in light of that, that you know, patience is pretty important, isn't it? If it's linked to being ready for the Lord's return. Well, James goes on and he gives three illustrations of patience uh, to sort of help us know what he's referring to. He, he first talks about a farmer who plants his crops and then has to wait for the harvest patiently. You know, the farmer has to trust that there will be produce. He has to believe that the rains will come. There's only so much he can do. The rest is up to God. And then James asks us to remember the prophets, those men who spoke the word of God faithfully in very difficult situations. Sometimes they were the only voice speaking truth in their context at their time. And a lot of times, if you read the prophets, they spoke of things far off in a distant future that they themselves would never see. And, you know, they never had the ability to, to say to their contemporaries, see, I told you so. Instead, they found themselves sometimes arrested in chains or even worse, they suffered patiently. And then, last but not least, James says, remember Job. It's only time that Job is mentioned in the whole of the New Testament. But James expected his readers, uh, including us, to, to know all about Job. Job was steadfast through all his trials. Uh, that does not mean that, that Job never had questions or that he never cried out to God or that he was never angry he certainly was all those things but he was faithful he never left God he kept on uh, he persevered and in the middle of all these examples of patience that James gives he tells us something that happens when we lose patience with God and that is that we grumble against one another. Uh, we complain about one another. We moan, he says. And when we do that, it's, it's actually a sign that we're not being patient with God. It's not just about having a problem with one another. It's really a problem we're having with God. Well, patience is tough. It's hard to practice certainly hard to practice right now, isn't it, in our current situation. Patience means saying I am willing to wait, to wait for God to work it out. It means I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust his timing. And it means that, that I'm going to persevere, whatever the circumstances are that surround me, by the power of God, I'm going to push through it and come out the other side. And in fact, I'm going to be stronger than ever before as a result of it. See, sometimes I think that, that we think patience is a passive trait, but it's not. Patience is active. I have to work at it. I have to exercise it consciously. I, I have to actually be aggressive in my patience. Have you ever thought about it that way? As James says, 
I need to hurry up and be patient because the coming of the Lord is near. Well, a little bit like James does in what he writes in this text, I'd like to offer a few illustrations of what patience and perseverance is, hopefully to help us see it better and help us grasp it a little bit more tightly in our lives. The first is from a, a traditional Hebrew story. It's not part of scripture, but it's a story that has been passed down through time among the Jews. It's a story about Abraham, the great patriarch of the Bible. And the story goes that Abraham was sitting outside his tent one evening when he, he saw an old man, very weary from age and from his travels, coming toward him. Um, Abraham rushed out, he, he greeted him, and then invited him into his tent. And once in his tent, uh, he washed his, his feet and he gave the old man food and drink. Well, the man immediately began eating, didn't say a prayer, uh, didn't ask a blessing, didn't wash his hands, anything. So Abraham asked him, don't you worship the one true God? And the old traveler replied, I worship fire only, and I reverence no other God. When he heard this, Abraham became pretty angry. He grabbed the old man by the shoulders and threw him out of his tent into the cold night air. And when the old man was gone, God called to his friend Abraham and asked where the stranger was. Abraham replied, I forced him out because he did not worship you. God answered, I have suffered him these 80 years, although he dishonors me, could you not endure him one night? Be patient. Sometimes it'll help us influence others for God. I know some of you at least are astronomy buffs. Uh, I'm not really, but, but I like to look at the pictures have you seen a picture of the Ring Nebula? If you haven't, you can Google it. You'll get a lot of pictures. When you look at it, it, it looks a lot like a smoke ring. I guess that'd be one way to describe it, colorful smoke ring. It's actually a star in the process of exploding, the Ring Nebula. And, and light from this explosion actually first reached Earth about a thousand years ago. It was what's called a supernova then, and it said that it was so bright that it could be seen in the daytime sky. It's not quite that bright now, but it's still exploding. It expands at a rate of 70 million miles a day. Think about that. But if you look at it through a telescope, you'll not see it moving at all. Your eye won't be able to detect movement of this explosion. Uh, its apparent size does not increase as you look at it. Photos taken decades ago look pretty much the same as those taken yesterday, and yet there, there's a star exploding out there. You see, huge happenings are not always visible to the naked eye especially when those huge happenings involve our God. Sometimes we pray and pray, and then we look and we don't see any change in the situation. But that's only from our perspective. If we could be patient and see from heaven's perspective, we would understand all that God is doing. Um, we would know what he's doing and planning in, in our lives. And we could see God working in various ways, working perhaps in hearts that seem hard to us. We could see God 
orchestrating circumstances that we know nothing about. And we can just see a galaxy of details being set in place for just the right moment when God brings the answer to fulfillment. So be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. John Killinger retells a story from the great days of the old western cattle ranches. He wrote, A little burrow sometimes would be harnessed to a wild steed. Bucking and raging, convulsing like drunken sailors, the two would be turned loose to proceed out onto the desert range. They can be seen disappearing over the horizon, the great steed dragging the little burrow along and throwing them about like a bag of cream puffs. They might be gone for days, but eventually they would come back. The little burrow would be seen first, trotting back across the horizon, leading the submissive steed in tow. Somewhere out there on the rim of the world, that steed would become exhausted from trying to get rid of the burrow, and in that moment, the burrow would take mastery and become the leader. You know, that's really the way it is in, in the way God works and in his kingdom also. The battle goes to the determined, not to the outraged. It goes to the committed, not to those who are overly dramatic. Be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. And finally, remember these interesting facts from history. The famous American poet, Carl Sandburg, flunked English. The great inventor, Thomas Edison, did not do well in school. His teachers thought he lacked the ability to learn. Einstein could not speak until he was four years old and did not read until he was seven. Beethoven. You know what Beethoven's music teacher said? He said, quote, as a composer, he's hopeless. Walt Disney was fired by a newspaper editor who said that Disney did not have any creative ideas. Can you imagine? An editor once told Louisa May Alcott that she was not capable of writing anything that would appeal to a popular audience. And finally, Michael Jordan, who many call the GOAT, as far as basketball is concerned. If you don't know what GOAT means, it means greatest of all time. Michael Jordan did not make the high school basketball team in his sophomore year because the coach said he wasn't good enough. So remember the farmer who waits on his crops. And uh, remember the prophets who remain steadfast. And remember Job and the way he clung to faith and persevered. Be patient until the coming of the Lord. The Lord is coming soon. That's what the New Testament says, and that's what we still say today. So we need to hurry up and be patient. Let's be ready for his return. What a glorious day that will be. Let's pray again. Thank you, God, for your love and for being with us and encouraging us. We pray we continue to listen to you and 
and learn to be patient and steadfast in in this life you have given us. Pray your greatest blessings on our world as we struggle through a difficult time, that you'll protect our brothers and sisters wherever they are, and that you will give us open doors to share hope and good news with people. Thank you for loving us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.